All right, welcome back to the studios here at Pierce College. Um, we come from the printmaking lab today to go ahead and uh, continue on our last lecture, which was dry point um, etching uh, lecture. So today what we're going to do is we are going to talk a little bit about how to enhance some of your printmaking uh, techniques. And we're going to be using a, a technique called Shinkale. So it's a really cool process. It's a quick, immediate uh, process. That's nice. I like instant gratification and Chicole, it's one of the, the quickest printmaking processes out there. So, um, I have various student examples here I wanted to share with you. Uh, this is a really nice example of Chicole. So, if you want to refer back to uh, the dry point um, lecture on, on this YouTube uh, station, it will give you a little bit of information regarding how this print was created. But again, it's the same idea of using a plexiglass plate, scratching it with an etching needle, uh, with one addition. And that being, um, we've included some chincolet elements. So in this particular print, we have um, a variety of rice papers. This all came from the paper source store up in Bellevue. Incidentally, they have a fantastic collection of papers. Papers that work really well um, are rice papers. Um, some scrapbooking supply places like Joanne or Michaels might sell some of this as well, but not in large quantities or large varieties. Um, origami papers work superb. Um, papers that are sort of plasticky, um, you see a lot of papers that are coming out now that kind of have a vellum finish to them. They're sparkly or whatever, they're scrapbooking papers. Um, they actually don't glue down to the surface. My students and I, we tried them as an example, they go over so hot. But what you can do is you can come up with variations on your print really quite quickly. Here's a print done by Pat. Um, he did a good job on this one, and you can see how quickly you can create a variation. So if you want, the Chicole pieces can be really small, like this example here by Pat, or you can keep your sheets quite large if you want to fill in a larger section. And uh, there's certainly some varieties uh, completed by different students. Um, here's another one in which the student just took smaller sections of the chincole rice paper um, to give it a nice effect of color and uh, it's a lot easier cleanup than laying down multiple inks and doing a rainbow roll or um, inking up multiple plates. It's a really quick way to, to dress up a print. So let me show you how that's done. Um, right here we have got essentially our, our image, okay? This is a really nice little dry point created by Liza Brown. And what I'm going to do for our demonstration is you've got this little stuffed animal creature um, dude right here. I'm gonna cut out a little template um, that we can use. And so I've already done that for the sake of time. The way you create a template is you just print this print once, take a pair of scissors, you can cut out your desired shapes. You can create um, a little template guide. Um, so in this case, we've got a nice little template guide right here that we can put over our image. Um, and so um, what I'm gonna do next is I'm just gonna take a sheet, this very nice um, rice paper. I think it's meant for um, origami. Again, I picked it up at the paper source store in Bellevue. So if you're by a paper source store, they have great papers. Utrecht, Dick Blick, um, some of the other art supply houses, Daniel Smith, they might sell um, papers like this. But paper source really has had the most extensive location. You can use an X-Acto knife on a self-healing mat if you want to get really precise shapes. Um, for the sake of this demonstration today, I'm just going to go ahead and uh, keep it pretty simple here, and we'll just use the scissors. That's another thing about chincole. I mean, you can be fairly creative with it. You don't have to necessarily be exact, or even for that matter, fill in a shape. Um, but um, you certainly can um, just experiment because it's such a quick process. We'll go ahead and cut this monster's mouth out here real quick. So this will give you an idea of how you can create a template. Um, with an existing print. So 
one does have to, you know, end up getting sliced and diced for the cause, but not a big deal. That's the beauty of printmaking. So now that I have the the form cut out, I've got a brush right here, cut off my template. I'm going to use nori paste. Um, you can use yes paste, you can use nori paste. I really like the yas, Yasutomo um, nori paste. It's a uh, really nice quality buckwheat paste. It's archival. Um, I usually take a little bit of the nori paste in the lid um, with a little bit of water and mix it up because on its own it's just a little thick. So with a brush I'm creating just a little bit of a a little bit of glue which I'm going to use to spread across the back side of my paper. Now I want this side to show up on, the sh on my print. So what that means is I'm going to um, I'm going to apply the adhesive glue on the back side of the print. I'll show you why this is important. Once in a while I'll have a student do this in reverse and it's pretty hysterical assuming you're not them. Um, and it actually fixes that paper, not onto the, the Shinko Lay piece of paper, not onto their piece of paper, which is their ultimate goal, but sadly, they find that it rests on their plate. Okay, so we want to make sure that we're gluing the back side, the side that's facing up towards the paper, okay, and not the plate side. So now that I have that glued, um, with a nice layer on the back. I'm going to position it on my plate right where I want it to print. At this point, I already have this inked. Um, if you need a re uh, refresher on how to ink a plexi dry point plate, go ahead and refer to the same lecture on this YouTube uh, station. And look up dry point etching and you'll find the lecture. So we've got the plate inked up for the sake of time. I'm going to place it on here. Same drill as far as uh, blotting your paper dry. So we'll come over here, grab a sheet of Reeves. I'm again using a 140 pound Reeves BFK printmaking paper. There's a right side and a wrong side. Both sides will print, but one's a little bit better. You want to avoid the screen side and print on the more textured side. The screen side's a little bit smoother. You want the side with more pulp. So what we're going to do then is simply lay our paper across our template. Okay, so we've got that nori paste facing up towards the direction of the paper. Viva paper towels, very important in case we have any extra ink or any extra glue that's going to be compressed through the pressure of this um, wonderful steel bed griffin etching bed. Um, that Viva paper towel barrier just acts as a, as a little safeguard. Run this through the press. It's the best part. All right, coming up right here, I felt the bed get engaged. The pressure there. Pull it out a couple of cranks. Pull up your blankets. You get to thankfully reuse these Viva paper towels, so go ahead and save them. Um, looks like in my anticipation of a great Chinkale print, I need to go just a little further. Let's engage that blanket further. All right, so here we'll have our finished product. Okay, so you can see. The Shinkole um, and the dry point etching combination. So this is a really fun project. Um, I encourage you to pull multiple editions or examples with the Shinkole. Use different paper patterns and different shapes. Um, again, if you don't want to register to a, a small template, you can print um, one sheet uh, of paper across your whole print. So, Possibilities are endless. It's a lot of fun. Get excited. Get your scissors out. 
Go find yourself some cool origami paper and get to town working on Shinka lace. All right, till next time, this is Pierce College Printmaking Labs. Thank you very much.